Thanks for stopping by at Twisted Art Designs. It's time to do another layout in my Julie Nutting Paper Doll Altered Book project. So for this one, I'm going to just uh, put together a couple of sets. The layout's just going to be um, right here on these pages. I may move, remove a few more just because we're getting nearer the end of the book and it's getting a little fat so I may remove a few pages and then make my set. For this one I'm going to use uh, Gracie and Tasha and I have a really really fun layout to do. And if you're new to this project maybe you just found this video there are um, there are 13 other videos so start at the beginning. This is a project you can do at your own pace and start it whenever you'd like and then just follow along and have a good time. So start at video one. There is a playlist in the description box below so you can uh, find the playlist and do them in order and get a book, a string bound book, and start making an altered book using your Julie Nutting dolls. Also a Facebook group for this project so um, if you would like to join that and show your stuff and be inspired by the other people who are doing this project please follow that link in the description box and join the Facebook group let's see your stuff okay so this theme is going to be an under the sea uh, mermaid theme and uh, my videos are strictly for inspiration to give you some ideas maybe show you some techniques that I'm using in my book you don't have to follow mine exactly be creative make your layouts the way you want to make them um, I like to draw and um, I have uh, some digitals available in the Etsy shop and there is a digital that goes along with this video you're not required to purchase it and um, every time somebody does I really appreciate it it helps me pay my bills um, but it's certainly not required this is just to give you some ideas or um, a theme for one of your pages in your book so the reason I chose Tasha is I loved her long skinny body it reminded me of mermaid so I'm using her for that reason the reason I chose Gracie is Gracie comes with her outfit is separate and so her body is um, like this and that was easy to create a mermaid um, girl out of this one as well with her own hairstyle and so um, that's why I chose these two dolls and there's a link in the description box below for if I can uh, find the dolls if they're still available uh, for purchasing because some of them are older uh, came out a while back um, and then the other pro products that I use there are affiliate links available in my description box so let's get started and I'll show you what we're going to do to create a beautiful underwater mermaid page so I've created this digital and it is um, dress up layovers for these two dolls for Tasha and Gracie. And so when you cut these images out, the hair pieces and the body pieces should fit over these dolls. And of course you'll have to um, delete some of this area, you know, cut some of this area away when you stamp your original image, but I'll show you how to do that. So this page is going to have a lot of really fun elements to it and I'm going to go ahead and fussy cut these out because what you do if you did purchase this is you'll get an instant download and you just print it out yourself on your own printer, print it onto paper, cardstock, whatever you want to use and then fussy cut the images out. Um, and then I'll show you how to assemble everything. Do a really super fun background and I'll show you some cool and cute techniques. These little fish here will, are going to become um, spinner elements. It's just going to be super cute and fun. So let's get started. For my background I'm going to use some old scrapbooking paper in blues and browns. And I don't even care that that has polka dots or that this has some brown flowers or that this has kind of a wallpaper type print it doesn't matter I still think they're gonna look super cute on this and then this one is just a brown that's kind of marbled which is perfect so what you want to do is to tear towards you in strips and kind of go back and forth so it's uneven so you end up with a strip like this that has the torn white part and the paper and you could do two layers of brown one layer of brown doesn't matter i think i'm also going to tear some uh, book text that i tore out of the book same with the sheets of paper you're going to tear like this 
and make as many strips as you want because you're going to kind of layer them. And I think these flowers, even though they're flowers, they're going to look cute. They may even look like sea urchins. Who knows? We'll just see how it comes out. Kind of wing it and see. So strips like that of each one of the pattern paper and you can make as many strips as you want, as big as small as you want. And they're going to get layered one on top of the other like this. And I've chosen two colors of blue paint that is a teal and a darker blue, kind of a tealish color that I think would look pretty with those pattern papers. I don't know if I've shown this before, but this little thing came from Dollar Tree. And if you have a Dollar Tree near you, you might want to pick up one or two of these little gems. It is actually um, in the makeup section and it is for washing your face. So it's got one side that's bristles and one side that's like silicone with these little bumpy things that you can wash your face with. But these little bumps on the bristles make perfect texture on a paper. The bristles are really soft so they spread paint really well. And then this little thing makes super cool texture. So I'll show you how it works. Just put a piece of plastic behind my pages just for protection. And so now let's get started. I'm using the bristly side to spread my paint and it works so easily. I mean, look how fast on a background I can spread that paint. I don't know why I haven't told you guys about this before because I use it all the time. Look at that quick, fast lay down of paint. Let me switch sides here. Now I'm just going to, leaving it um, with paint on it doesn't matter. I'm going to pick up the lighter color and add the lighter color and kind of blend them in together. And look at how easy that is with this tool. I just love this little tool. Super easy peasy. So look at that. And it gets paint in your crack perfectly well, which, you know, I laugh about that all the time. We need to paint your crack. The crack of your book always needs to have paint. It looks funny if it's missing it. So you can take this and you can use this to make texture. Those little bristly things, if you just dot them, look at that cool texture that it makes. This side, oh man, oh man, this side makes the coolest texture ever. So I just take that little knobby side and I just kind of rub it in the paint like this and then pat it and then watch what happens when you put it on the page. Kind of put it on and use it almost like a rubber stamp. And look at that texture image that it creates. It's so cool and it's so much fun to do. But it makes for a gorgeous element to your background. So I kind of like to go and take a little bit hint of a darker color and stamp in that cool fun texture with the knobby side of this little happy-go-lucky tool. Look at that, so fun. Makes total circles with all those little dots. Love it, love, love, love. Okay, so I'm gonna get that finished painting and then we'll move on to the paper. So here's what my painted background looks like and I went an even shade darker of blue to add those little elements and I know it seems like it's kind of busy and doesn't seem underwater-ish but it is just going to add something fun and interesting. I took this side with the little knobbies on the bristles and added some more of the lighter teal just patting in some more lighter teal color like that. It just adds some fun and interest and when we get the elements on there that's going to kind of fade into the background so that's the first layer right there. And this little tool washes out super easy um, with just a little drop of dish soap and water and I make sure to do it before the paint this dries. It's going to be your torn sheets of paper so what you want to do is kind of just lay them down and see how you like them layered in what order you like. Like this. Do you need more? Do you want to add another row? I think I might add another row of the polka dot. I really love how that looks. Which who would have thought polka dot paper would look cute for an underwater page. But I do like it. So I'm going to add another layer of polka dot paper. It can be like that maybe. And this is really cute. And this one is going to be my bottom 
ground layer, which I am going to add some real sand and shells and things to later. Okay, so to put these down, um, what I like to do is get them lined up the way you want them, and then I crease them in the middle of the book, the gutter of the book. Take a bone folder and just make a little crease there, and then start with your top one and glue it down. You can either use matte gel medium, Mod Podge, um, art glitter glue, whatever you want to just start gluing down your layers. But what I like to do is leave a little space because some of those cute elements in the digital file, like some of the seaweed, the shells, the starfish, those are things that you might want to have poking out from behind some of this paper. So you don't want to glue that top edge and you want to decide how far in you want to put things behind the layer. So when you're gluing down, my suggestion would be turn it over and just put glue like around the bottom edge. It doesn't matter. It's going to stay in the book. It's not going anywhere. Glue it down, push that seam into the gutter, glue it into place just at the bottom, and it almost leads, leaves like little pocket areas for you to tuck different things. And I'm going to show you a couple of different ideas for some really fun things to tuck in those little areas. This is what it looks like with my pieces of paper glued into place. On the back side, I put glue all down this edge and then along the bottom, and then I would just press them into place, and they do have space behind each one. I did my bone folder in the gutter to score it, and then I went ahead and folded the pages up and kind of squished it good to make a nice, good little, a little um, fold, a little crease right there in the gutter. This is along the edge, so obviously I'm going to flip it over and cut these pieces off. You could also bend them over and fold them over onto this page, but this page is going to get covered. There's no really need to, so I'm going to just cut those off. So another thing I did was to take a little strip of book text and tear it, and then use some Tim Holtz Distress ink and just distress it. And I'm going to put a little bit of glue on the back. I'm just using art glitter glue, just a little line of glue on the back, and I'm going to tuck it behind this row just for just another layer of interest. I think it's going to look really nifty to have little bits of book text sticking out. So look how cool that looks. So I'm going to do another little piece like that over here. That looks really good. I love it. So I'm going to take some Tim Holtz Distress Ink and just a little soft brush. This again too is a makeup brush and you can buy these specifically for doing things like inking and they're super expensive or you can get them at Dollar Tree. Love dollar stuff. I've had that forever too. Now I'm going to pick up a little of this and just on this area here where it's going to be sand, I don't want that white. I want it to be sandy color. So I'm just going to go through and add some ink to that to tone it down. I want these to be white but not this. So I'm just going to ink that, real simple, not anything complicated, to make that little sandy bottom of the beat of the ocean. Love it. And then for these little wave things here, you can also take and sort of roll with your fingers, just push and roll those little white edges back and forth and make them look rolled and they kind of look wave-like. I know this is under the ocean and there wouldn't really be waves under the ocean, but for your altered book and the look of your altered book, it's just cute and pretty and adds texture and interest, which is what we love on our altered book pages. So I'm just kind of picking up those papers lightly and then just taking my finger and rolling it towards me and making little rolled edges on the tears. Just like that. It looks really cute. I like that. Okay, so I've cut out the pieces. Um, this is for the one for Gracie and I'm going to go ahead and use this stamp only for the Gracie set. And I'm going to put it on my Dilusions, Ranger Dilusions journal block. I use that as a stamping platform, which I love. And I'm just going to ink her basically from the thighs up because you want to get her arms and her hands. 
I'm using a cream color card stock to stamp onto. And then I'm going to go ahead and cut that out. And I can put this down first. This is going to go in place just like that. So see how the layover fits right over the image. With the headpiece image, there's a, a black line that goes underneath the little starfish and the hairline. And you just cut a slit in that because when you cut this out, you're going to slide the hair onto the head. Okay, so I used a self-healing mat and an X-Acto knife to cut out the little spaces um, under the arms, the folded arms. Her hair is going to go on her head like this, so you're going to just put her in place like that and put a little dot of glue behind. So you can flip it over, you can put some tape there or you can put glue there, whatever you want to do just to hold that down. I'm going to just use a little bit of glue on the back side just to get it in place and then I'm going to glue this in place so I only need glue on the little top half here and I'm going to just line it up with her hips and put it in place and oh my gosh so cute I hope you guys like this because I had so much fun creating it look at that so now you've got this adorable mermaid. She has a starfish in her hair and uh, a seahorse holding onto her hair. Her cute little seashell top. It's got little dots for pearls, which I'm going to put some um, Nuvo drops in pearl white. And then this beautiful little tail. So there's, there is the one that I made out of Gracie. I'm going to do the same thing with the Tasha stamp. So I'm going to attach her to my stamping platform. And then I'm going to ink her halfway up just so that I get her hand and kind of her hip area. Just like that. Stamp her and cut her out. So here's this one and um, you do want to cut off her little bun on the side of her head because this hairstyle is going to take the place of that and you just slip this into place like this and here's her hairstyle and you can put her shoulder over it so it looks like the hair is behind her shoulder like that. I love it. It's super fun. And then I'm going to just take her out her body and same thing, put some glue on the top half, place it over her body, and it should fit right into place, just like that. And you can leave it like this with her um, arm behind her body, but I created an arm so that her arm can be sticking out and she can be holding one of the elements on the design sheet. So here's what she looks like put together. Oh, I just love, love, love it. It's so cute. So cute. Love it. And a little tip for you about printing. Um, when you're printing this on your home printer and you get your printer preview page that comes up just before you hit print on your printer, um, make sure that the scale is set to 100%. For some reason, the default on my little Canon printer, default is 96%, so I can just manually go in there and change it to 100%. Otherwise, these pieces will be too small to fit on the doll. So just make sure you check that and that you have your scale set to 100% on your printer. So here's her arm, and see how now I can glue that arm on, and she's got an arm sticking out that can hold something. So you just cut the arm out and you just kind of put it over her little shoulder stump and then glue it into place. Before you glue your girls down into place, you're obviously going to need to figure out how they fit onto your book. And um, for those of you, I know some people in the group are using a little bit bigger of a book, so this will work out really well. But you can turn her like this and make her long ways. You can um, do it like this and then have her tail be going off the page. You could do a fold up tail that folds out for something interactive if you want to. However you want to lay this out. And you want to use the other little cute little elements. So like see this cute 
clamshell with a pearl. See how that can stick in underneath one of those little pocket areas and then you can glue it down. But you want to do that last. This is the time where you want to lay it all out, get all the pieces you want to use and put them into place. And I want to, I want to use the whale. So I'm going to get the whale cut out and see how I want to lay this out. So I'm going to do mine like this. I'm going to make her up here and her a little bit behind so that I can fit both of the mermaids on the page because I want them both on the page. I'm going to put my whale down here and I'm going to glue those images into place. And then I'm going to add the other little elements tucked in behind the little um, turtle and I'm going to do some other different things that I'm going to show you. So that's how I'm going to glue them into place. So here's what it looks like with them glued into place. And I put this girl as far up to the top and as far over to the edge as I could get her. When I put this tail on top, I bent it so that and just glued the tip down so that it has a roll to it. So it gives it depth and looks like it's a flowy mermaid tail. I had to adjust her arm. Um, it was out to the side and it would have been in the gutter and I didn't want to fold or bend her hand. So I just trimmed it and I stuck it behind this little part of her hip and um, put, a, put a starfish, one of the elements in her hand. I put a pop dot behind the starfish so it's raised. When I glued the whale down, I did the same thing. I put a bend in the tail and glued it just here and here and here so that there's a space that looks like it's shapely and flowing so that's that so far it's coming together and oh so fun i, I say this every time but i think this is going to be my favorite page yeah, the little turtle i added two little pop-up squares and i'm putting the turtle up here like he's swimming along and he's going to be popped up so there's the turtle I'm going to add this cute little clamshell and I'm going to tuck it in here behind that paper and I put a pop-up in the top so it's got glue at the bottom and a pop-up behind so that makes it curvy and sticking up out of the sand like that. I'm going to do that with the other big shell over here. I'm going to add the sand at the bottom before I add the crab because I want the crab on top of the sand. So for sand, what I'm going to do is just take some glossy accents and put it all along um, this bottom edge. I don't want to cover the whole thing. I love that dark paper. So I'm going to just, you know, make some little sand, sandy lines here that are just jagged. And I'm going to sprinkle real sand over it and I'm going to completely let it dry. Glossy accents takes an hour or so. Once it's completely dry, what I like to do, I don't brush any of the loose sand off. I take a soft brush and some clear varnish and then I just tap over the sand with varnish. I've seen other people do it differently where they actually mix it into matte gel medium or Mod Podge. You can do those things. Then you can kind of pat it all along and let it dry and your sandals stay put. But to me, it looks too chunky and doesn't look sand-like, so I like doing it my way. Everybody has a different way. So I'm gonna glue it into the glossy accents, let it dry, come back and put some varnish over it, and then I'm gonna add some seashells, the crab, and the last element, I'll show you how to make the little fish spinners, and I am gonna add a title on this page. When adding the little pieces of seaweed, I just kind of bent those and popped those up here and there behind to make them have some interest to them. So to do that, I'm just putting glue in dots or in stripes. And those are the places that are going to get glued down. And then I'm sticking it down in between. That's why we only glued down part of that paper at the bottom and left it other places. This way you can kind of stick it in behind and bend your little seagrass and then glue it down like that and it comes out nice and wavy and it looks realistic. So look how cute that looks. I'm also going to take some cheesecloth and then I had this cool stuff. This was like a sheet of like handmade fiber paper 
And I'm going to take those outside because it's going to make a disastrous mess, but I'm going to take those outside and spray them with Dilutions ink. I have mushed peas and dirty martini. There are two colors of green, so I'm going to spray some of this in each color and then let it dry. Next, for doing your fish spinners, this is what I like to do. So to cut them out, instead of completely cutting them out, what I like to do, which is so much easier, is I cut the bottom close to the edge, the top right along the edge, but the rest of it just loosely cut out like this. This will make sense why in a minute. So cut it along the top edge, cut them along the bottom edge, like that. Do that to both sets of fish. Okay, so you're going to need a piece of blue embroidery floss and you're going to want to tie some knots in the embroidery floss. So just about every, I don't know, inch or so, just go ahead and make a knot in your embroidery floss. Doesn't have to be perfect, don't, they don't have to be even. They're going to help it do its spinning and give you something to hold on to. So I do that first, make my little knots in my floss. Okay, so now next, what you're going to do is obviously you're going to be gluing these images together. So if you hold it up to the light, you hold it up to the light, you can probably see through um, your card stock, which I can. I'm not, I don't have a light to put behind it right now, but you're going to put your glue, going to get them right side up, facing each other, and you're going to put glue on the backs of both, all the way around them, and then you're going to put the embroidery floss in the middle, like this, and like this, and when you hold it up to the light, you line the two pieces up together with the glue in them, and then I take clamps and go like this, and I clamp them to dry. Once they're dry, I go back and I finish cutting out the little detailed fins. That way they're gonna match up perfectly. So then you'll have one on one side and one on the other side and they're gonna match up perfectly. You have to look in the light so that you can match them up when you're holding them to glue them, but trust me, the technique works perfectly. So you're gonna glue one here and you wanna leave you want to leave a good three or four inches at the bottom tail. So go up about three or four inches and glue the first one. And then only go out uh, up about an inch or so like this and glue the second set. So glue your two sets into place and then clamp them and let it dry. So this is what you end up with is your string with two fish on it, um, string down below with knots and a couple knots up at the top. So what you want to do is come up onto your page and find a spot and I'm going to put my little spinners right here. I think they fit really well on the page there. Looks really cute. And I'm going to go like right underneath her hair here and poke a little hole with a paper piercer. And then I'm going to thread this on a needle and poke it through that hole and knot it behind the page. So I thread this and I put it through the hole. I lined them up where I wanted them to be. And then on the back side here, I'm just going to cut this string off. I'm going to knot it to the page, cut it off, and I'm going to put glue and some scotch tape over the back side just to hold it and anchor it in place. I have these cute little post earrings that look like sand dollars, and so I think I'm going to pop the little sand dollars off the posts and use those at the bottom. I've got my sand my beach sand. I have some charms and most of them are a little bit too chunky. Um, I do have a little gold flat starfish so I might add one or two of those to the page. Those are kind of cute. Um, I was going to add some seashells and unless I can find my seashells that are really flat I'm not going to do that because I don't want my page to be too thick for the gatoring of the book, but those will be cute little elements to add.
Now this is dry, I'm going to just take some little fine pieces of it. I'm going to just kind of cut away some little pieces of it. I love how it looks like seaweed. And I know you guys don't all have this. This is just giving you an idea of decorating your page if you do have mulberry paper in green or um, something like that. This just looks so cool. So I need to cut it a little shorter. And I'm going to put a little glue along the edge at the bottom. And I'm going to tuck it behind this paper here. See if I can get it back there. Just use the tip of my fake scissors to just kind of shove it back there. Oh, look. Oh my god, that's so cool. It looks like seaweed. So here's how it looks with that fibrous green stuff tucked in behind. Some more of the um, seaweed from the kit. And here's the spinners. This is dried. So the spinner, you just pick this up, pull it up off the page, and spin it. And you've got little spinning fish. So that's how the spinner works. So it's got a spinner element and some cute pop-up things. I love the mermaids, the stuff in their hair. Um, I think I am going to add a half pearl, a flat back pearl here, and just a couple of other little fun little elements. But for the most part, this is all done, and I have put my varnish over my um, sand at the bottom. It just needs to dry. I added the crab, the little earrings that look like little sand dollars, and it's just really cute. I need to add my saying to the page and the little details, and then it'll be complete. And I added the saying, swimming with whales is a mermaid tail. Tail spelled T-A-L-E like a tail, not T-A-I-L like a mermaid tail. Just a cute little saying, swimming with whales is a mermaid tail. So this is the final result. I added some little gems that look like bubbles. Those are for doing three-dimensional um, sculptured nails, but I they're flat back and I added them to make them look like bubbles. I added a halfback pearl to the clamshell. There's that little, uh, the little brass, little starfish charms and the little sand dollar earrings, the spinner, um, the little seaweed elements and I love the background to how that just added some interest to it I really do and then I took um, a colored pencil in a royal blue and I went around the mermaids and the whale to really pop them out with some royal blue so that really added something to it so I hope you enjoyed this had fun again um, if you want to purchase this digital uh, dress up kit for those two paper dolls uh, the two paper doll stamps for Tasha and Gracie. If you want to buy this kit, there's a link in the description box below for where it can take you to find it. Um, but you don't have to. It just gives you some ideas of things to do to make a mermaid page in your altered book. So I hope you had fun and you come back for the next episode of our Julie Nutting Paper Doll Altered Book Project. Thanks for stopping by. Have fun. Go make art because art soothes the heart. <laughs>